everyone welcome back to the course energy resources economics and sustainability in the last class we have been discussing a financial model wherein we tried to understand the cash flows for a hypothetical wind farm that was to be set up we tried to estimate what would be the capex how the capex will be distributed for a span of 3 years how the revenue will be generated through a span of 12 years or so then how the capital would be raised in terms of issuing bonds to the market at an interest rate of 6% how the depreciation would be calculated and based upon all these factors what would be the final cash flows and how do we estimate the net present value of the wind farm we came to the conclusion that the wind farm in the present characteristics or the present assumptions that we took had a negative npv or we can say that the business was not very profitable or lucrative uh, to be undertaken by uh, any corporate and in today's class we'll try to understand are there some incentives that could be provided by the government or th through the state which could help us in the introduction of or in the propagation or the penetration of renewable energy because at the onset many projects uh, which might uh, be wind might related to hydrogen energy solar energy might not seem profitable or might not be able to compete uh, with uh, the conventional fuels in terms of solar uh, uh, natural gas coal or oil because the industry has been there for a couple of centuries the setup is there uh, oh, and uh, the markets are quite used to like the operations of these kind of energy fuels in the past so uh, what we will do today uh, do today is try to uh, begin with the same model that we have created in the last class and try to analyze what are the different kinds of policy interventions or uh, what could be the different ways in which uh, profitability could be induced further we will also try to understand what be the effect of certain um, uh, 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 environmental effect or certain effects that could be propagated uh, by uh, uh like um, by some of uh, the uh, uh delays that are caused in the plant how would that affect the profitability of the plant in the long run these are some of the things that we will try to focus in the present class so let us first go back to the financial model that we have created in the earlier class so i'll be sharing the excel file with you guys so what you see in front of you is the excel model for the typical uh, wind farm uh, that we have created of course it's a th hypothetical case uh, but uh, like this could help us understand some of the basic concepts so just to a uh, quick recap of the things that we have done we have assumed the price of electricity to be 3 this is where the revenue will be generated and be uh, it is expected to increase at the rate of 2% every year then we have expected that the electricity production starts uh, at the second year and uh, this is where 80% of the electricity will be produced and then it will be running at 100% of the capacity from third year onwards uh, the revenue is just the multiplication of the two. Uh, for raising the capital, uh, and the corporate will be selling uh, some bonds, and uh, and and then the plant would be sold at the last of uh, at the end of 14th year, which again would have a positive cash flow. So this is, these are all the sources of revenue. In terms of cost, we will have the capex being distributed for the first three years, uh, which we have assumed. And then we have assumed uh, a certain uh, fixed cost, which would again be increasing at the rate of 3%. Uh, variable cost that starts from second year onwards when the plant comes into operation, and then it is expected to increase at the rate of 5% per year. Further, the corporate would have to pay the interest on the bonds that it has issued for raising the capital, and that goes at 6%, and that goes on till uh, the 12th year. And on the 13th year, it will be uh, uh, returning the money uh, back to the investors. And a total of them will giving us the total cost that is incurred by the, uh, by the entity. Uh, we have calculated the pre-tax income. Uh, then the depreciation is basically to take into account the distribution of capex so as to take, calculate the taxable income. And uh, this is uh, uh, we, the depreciation we have calculated, and we have uh, it's a straight line depreciation for the 10 years. It changes because, like, the investment is made over a span of three years, and accordingly, there's a depreciation. We have calculated the taxable income, which comes out to be negative in many of the cases because uh, uh, the, uh, the entity is not profit making. Uh, and the tax uh, is negative. Uh, 
the brackets I am using here basically reflects a negative cash flow. So the taxes are negative uh, in the sense that we are expecting that the corporate would have other uh, verticals where it is having a profit generation and this uh, negative tax is basically offsetting some of the tax that it would have been, it would have been paying on the profit making businesses. Further, we have the total cash flows which will be discounted based upon the discount factor of around 15% which we have assumed and adding all the cash flow, discounted cash flow gives us the NPV. Now, let us tr uh, try to understand uh, the, in, uh, 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 the effect of two main things on the profitability. One is the discount rate that the entity has chosen that has been decided by the management of the entity based upon the past experience. So how sensitive are the results to the discount rate that has been chosen? So what I will do is I will make a pivot table wherein I have the different discount rates given here. I am changing the discount rate from 5% to 15%. 5% would be a discount rate in which the corporate is uh, very positive uh, about the plant. It has been operating such kind of plants in the past. It has a good amount of experience and it knows like what kind of problems can be uh, can be coming in the future and how to deal with and deal with these problems then further uh, there could also be a reduction in the interest rate uh, at which the bonds are sold to the market so the government might come up with certain policies in which it is giving uh, uh, it is uh, giving the money to the corporates like this at a very small interest rate so at in this case i've assumed an interest rate of 6% but i am varying it from 1 to 6% in case like the, uh, these kinds of projects are important to the nation as well as uh, very good for reaching the net zero targets and the government would want to come up with some incentives in terms of availability of finance for setting up a plant like this. So what I, uh, what I have tried to do is make up a pivot table where I have on the x-axis and this is the changing of the discount rate and the y-axis uh, I have the changing at the rate at which uh, uh, the interest is paid on the um, borrowed capital from the market. So this uh, borrowed capital is basically used for putting up the capital investment at the onset of the plant. Here we have the final result and I have just um, made this in a function where the, uh, uh, the discount rate is linked to this particular cell which is 15% and uh, the interest rate which I am paying in here is also linked to the 6% that I have in here. So what I will essentially do is I will select this table, go to the data tab, what if analysis, a data table. So my input row is basically this. 15% which is the discount rate, column is the interest rate and I press OK and this is how uh, the, uh, the NPV would vary with the changing uh, of the discount rate and the interest rate. So what you see here is the value for the case that we have already uh, simulated or modeled. Uh, it's exactly the same for 15% of uh, the discount rate and 6% of the interest rate on the market capital I am getting a very negative NPV. If I reduce, uh, keep on reducing the rate at which uh, the bonds could be uh, issued, still uh, like at if it's one percent and still the uh, like uh, discount rate remains fifteen percent, I would have to work at one percent and and the cap and the total NPV starts to get a bit positive. The same could be sent at the other extreme as well. If I reduce the discount rate to five percent, which means uh, the corporate or uh, the is uh, corporate is very uh, optimistic about this process and towards the end and if I decrease it to 5% and uh, the bonds are issued again at 6% I can achieve again achieve uh, 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 like a uh, NPV of uh, uh, which is positive and this is these are two ways in which the plant could be profitable. If both of these are applied together uh, positively uh, and we can see uh, it could be even more profit making. So these kind of sensitivities are often done by the management of uh, the particular entity to see what could be the trade-offs or what could be sensitivity of the project with respect to the uh, different kinds of rates or the assumptions that could be made. So this is just one way of understanding. So the more the green side we go, the more the profit uh, the entity is making. The more towards the red we can see uh, the NPV comes out to be negative and it would not be profitable for the entity to undertake this, uh, this particular project. Let us uh, try to understand some other measures that might be undertaken. So let us go back to the slides. So there could be some of the policies or incentives that could be brought in by the government or the state. This could be the tax rate on the taxable income. 
so the government uh, would uh, uh, like might give in a tax concession this tax concession can come in the form of an appreciated appreciated depreciation which means the depreciation of the capex happens at a much faster rate and you can uh, make use of it because any uh, cost saving that you have in the years that are near to you would be much more uh, than uh, any cost saving that occurs maybe 15 years down the line then the government uh, in the developed world uh, normally also refers some kind of credits called the tax credits which is normally a percentage of the total capex that is invested so these uh, tax credits could help the industry uh, uh, during the initial few years when it is making the capital investment to offset some of the taxes in uh, in its profit making businesses so that is one of the incentives that the uh, the state or the government can offer then uh, uh, there could be another way in which the government can impose taxes on uh, the fuels which are not doing something good for the environment in and in this case maybe the coal or the natural gas or the oil because these kind of uh, uh, fuels would eventually cause uh, co2 emissions the government would want to impose some kind of co2 tax on those kind of resources so that they also become uh, like not very economically appealing and both the systems or both the energy production pathways can be seen at par another way could be the government can guarantee a favorable price for uh, the energy that is produced from a green pathway the so called green pathway so in this case the government can subsidize some of the uh, electricity that is produced or the government can put a price capping so that uh, or the people could come up uh, willfully and uh, voluntarily to give up an excessive price for the green energy which can also happen and then the government can also put in uh, environmental regulations that uh, basically prohibit for future setting up of plants which have emissions which are not uh, conducive for the environment so in this case uh, future plants which are relying on a technology that is not good for the environment might not be able to come up so let us uh, try to understand some of these uh, uh, like this of these methodologies and its effect on the business model for the wind farm that we have created so the first thing that we can uh, we will try to understand is accelerated depreciation so in in this particular case we have taken in a straight line depreciation that is happening for around 10 years what if the government allows an appreciated depreciation for 5 years what will be the effect on the cash flow this let us try to understand that and uh, also to uh, understand like is uh, uh, is it uh, like is this normally adopted yes so the government uh, in india normally comes up with a lot of accelerated depreciation for green energy assets uh, the particular case can be taken as like one of the policies that came uh, gave in like uh, an accelerated rate for depreciation for solar projects to be as high as 40% so that the capital assets could be depreciated at very fast and and uh, the investor could make uh, uh, like uh, could uh, like make gains from the tax saving from this accelerated depreciation comparatively the normal rate of depreciation for normal plants uh, is ex around 15% so normally these kinds of guidelines are reported by the CERC which is the central e electricity regulatory commission and so let us go back to our final uh, our uh, original uh, diagram in the form of excel and let's try to understand the effect of accelerated depreciation so going back to the excel again so this was the depreciation that we have originally estimated okay uh, in the form of uh, uh, 10 years uh, and we have now updated it to 5 years so what i have done is like the investment was happening in the first 3 years in the first year it was around uh 225 crores and 525 crores in the second year or the year 1 and then around 112.5 crores in the last year so what i have divided it i have divided it equally among the five trenches and divided it among the first five years so this uh the first investment that was happening in the year 0 has been equally divided among the first five years the investment that happened in in the first year was equally divided among the uh, uh, like consecutive 5 years divided by 5 and the something similar happened for the next investment adding that up gives me the total investment that is happening till and the year 6 so we had this our case as for the business as usual and uh, we had a depreciation that was straight line earlier and in which the depreciation was happening at a straight line for the 10 years so you can see the depreciation continuing almost up till the 11th year so let me replace that with an accelerated depreciation so let me delete this and add in the values that i have calculated in here so 
so you can see the uh, depreciation now happens only till the year 6 and the effect now has been that the NPV which was around say minus 77,000 uh, CR has now reduced to around minus 36 CR. So, it has become um, slightly better as compared to the earlier case, but the bracket shows the plant is still negative. So, uh, the one thing we need to understand is that accelerated depreciation does have a significant effect on the cash flows. The reason being uh, because of the discount factor because earlier these costs were being incurred later in the life and so any cost that is incurred later in the life because our discount factor becomes very less. So, any cost in the present year has the value equal to 1 and whereas if you go to the last years the value becomes uh, multiplied by a factor of 0 0.14 so that uh, drastically reduces the value of a particular incentive. So, it is better to get incentives earlier on the life of the plant so as to make maximum gains. So, what we understood was like accelerated depreciation does have a significant effect and that is one of the reasons why government would want to uh, propagate uh, that uh, companies uh, uh, or entities to come up with the accelerated depreciation so as uh, they make a maximum amount of profit that uh, is possible. So, let us uh, try to understand uh, some more of the effects going back to the slides. Another thing the government can do is give some kind of tax credits and this kind of uh, policy is, uh, is quite normal in the developed world where the, uh, where the governments would want to give some kind of tax credits in, in the form of the percentage of the capital that is invested. So, what happens in this case is that government would give a certain percentage which, is may, which could vary from 5 to 30 percent of the total capital investment for a particular year and that credit is something and the entity could subtract in terms of the tax that it pays on its profit making businesses. Again, I would like to repeat here for these kinds of incentive to take place along with the accelerated depreciation, the entity must have some kind of profit making businesses where it is liable to pay taxes. In case uh, the entity does not have any other uh, uh, business lines where it is making profit, uh, it might happen that such kind of incentives are delayed to the later part of the uh, or delayed by a few years uh, where they might not appear to be very lucrative. So, let us uh, go back again and try to understand the effect of tax credits. So, in this case, we'll, what we will try to, uh, uh, we will assume that the government is issuing around 10 percent of the tax credit for the investment that is made during the setting up of the wind plant. So, returning uh, to the excel sheet, uh, uh, we see that like uh, the plant is still negative and what we will induce is, we will take around uh, the uh, tax credit in here. So, we have a column which is empty and we will say equal to around 10 percent of the capital that is invested. And we do that for the first three years when the capital investment is taking place. So, what we see here is now the plant all of a sudden has now as a positive NPV and this NPV comes around to be around 40 CR and this means that uh, the, uh, and the, and the entity would might want to now take further with this case where and they are now expected to make a net profit at the end of 14 years of the plant. And, uh, and we can attribute this profit making to two basic policies. One is the accelerated depreciation that is again inbuilt into this and plus a tax credit. So, what is happening here is I am inputting around 10 percent of the tax credit and this is the percentage of the capital that is invested and this tax credit is added to the uh, tax that the entity pays and I am using a negative sign. So, uh, which means it is able to make pro, uh, avoid a good amount of tax in some of the profit making businesses. Overall, uh, because of the incentives that has been made, uh, the plant appears now to be positive and, uh, and because these kinds of tax credited are awarded earlier in the life of the plant where the discount factors uh, does not have a very significant effect on the cash flows, uh, the corporate can make a good advantage of these tax credits. And this is a normal practice in many of the countries where and they would want to award cert certain kind of tax credits in order for the uh, entity to make uh, to help make a plant profitable. And uh, let us uh, go back to the slides. Apart from that, uh, there could be certain policies by the government in which it might want to give in a guaranteed price uh, to, uh, uh, to be paid for the production of clean or greener power. 
and in this case this could be this uh, uh, wind energy farm wherein uh, the government might want to give and say if the normal electricity is available at 3 rupees uh, a unit or 3 rupees a kilowatt hour uh, might be the greener electricity the government would want to give at around 4 rupees uh, per kilowatt hour and again the people uh, knowing that uh, going towards clean and green energy is important uh, might be willing to pay for it uh, such kind of things uh, are quite known uh, to work in, in the developed part of the world where like people are affluent and they don't mind paying something extra. Uh, the incentivization of uh, green electricity in a country like India is sometimes questioned because like many uh, like we have a lot amount of energy poor people and increasing the energy rate for them might not be taken as a positive step. Uh, so, but uh, like the affluent uh, part of the society can always opt for it. Another methodology that can be adopted on the similar terms is like in the, in, the, in the original case we have assumed that the electricity price would be growing at a rate of around 2% per year. What if I increase the rate at which the prices would grow? It would have a similar effect as uh, uh, as increasing the price, but uh, the advantage is that, that the base case for the present year remains the same. The only thing is in the future, the electricity prices would be growing at a much faster rate. And all uh, both the things can help us uh, achieve uh, uh, a target uh, uh, like uh, of making the plants which are based on green energy to be pos uh, to be profitable and so that more such plants come up in the future which can help in uh, negating the uh, negative effects of uh, the uh, power plants or electricity production that comes uh, traditionally from coal, natural gas or oil. So let us uh, try to understand the effect of uh, 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 an increased price uh, of the electricity as well as an increased rate at which the electric pri electricity prices might increase in the future. So going back to the excel sheet again, so we have uh, the same excel sheet back. So uh, let us go back and uh, say that like we do not have any oscillated depreciation in this case and we also uh, do not have a tax credit. So let us uh, go to a sheet where we can see that uh, the prices start from 4 rupees a kilowatt hour and that they are increasing at the rate of 2% every year. So in the earlier case in the business as usual which you can see the prices start at 3 rupees and then they increase uh, all the way to around 4 rupees at the end of 14th year. Whereas in this case what I am going to assume is that the price starts at 4 rupees it increases at the rate of 2 percent per year. Uh, so the rate of increase remains the same and they end up at around 5.3 rupees at the end of 14 years. And if this was the, uh, was the assumption and if people are willing to pay a 30 percent premium on, on the electricity that is uh, generated by a clean and a green source, we can again see that the uh, net present value of uh, the plant comes out to be positive with an NPV of around 4 CR. And this is again an, uh, like, uh, an, uh, like, uh, an indicator to the industry or the corporate to set up a plant like this. But again, uh, the, uh, the people are willing to pay an extra price in this case. And, uh, and uh, to repeat again, in this case, we do not have a government incentives in, in the form of accelerated depreciation or tax credits. So we do not see, uh, uh, we have the normal depreciation that is happening for around 11 years and uh, there is no tax credit which you can see in the sheet in front of you. Further, uh, and there could, uh, we can uh, revert back to an electricity price of 3 rupees which makes the NPV again negative to around minus 77 CR. But what we can do is maybe the electricity prices are now increasing at the rate of 6.5% uh, per year. So in this case, uh, I have now increased uh, uh, the rate at which the electricity prices would be increasing. So if it is 3 rupees today, uh, 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 today maybe down uh, one year it would be 3.2 rupees. And if I do the same analysis, whereas at the end of uh, the 14th year the electricity prices rise to as high as, as 7.24 rupees which has more than doubled at the end of 14 years which is which was not the case in the earlier ones. We see that the plant again can have a positive NPV uh, with around uh, 6 uh, CR of the price. But again to mind you in this case the electricity prices are increasing at a much faster rate.
and uh, i would also like to point out like such kind of policies might not be very appreciated in a country like india because a lot of people uh, are not very affluent uh, where they can pay in extra uh, prices for the energy further these uh, prices of energy would also reflect in the businesses and the price of commodities that we see in the market so this can also uh, lead to a high inflation rates and the government would be uh, very careful uh, while adopting a policy like this but these kinds of incentives can help in making the plants which are based on clean and uh, green energy to be lucrative to be taken up by corporates now let us also try to understand some other features uh, so going back to the slides now further the governments can issue some kinds of incentives or disincentives uh, to the fossil fuel industry so as to uh, make a competition now these kinds of incentives could be like the land uh, could be available at very cheap rates or on the other friend uh, uh, the other friend the, uh, the government want to uh, like put a di disincentive on uh, the traditional energy industry by putting on in a in a carbon tax wherein they have to pay certain amount of money for each molecule of co2 or carbon that they release into the atmosphere so the, by the imposition of these incentives or this disincentives the aim is to bring both the technologies at par because naturally uh, the, uh, the fossil fuel industry benefits from a very well set up supply chain and very well set up, uh, set up market mechanisms and these mechanisms are yet coming up in the case of renewable energy so to bring uh, a level playing field for the renewable energy the governments or the state would want to put in certain in, uh, incentives and disincentives in this case is like there could also be coming in uh, of uh, certain uh, policies in terms of in terms of certain lawsuits where uh, and there could be like uh, people who are lobbying against the installation of certain kind of plants was fossil and non fossil fuels and we'll try to understand the effect of those now but before that let us uh, try to understand a, a simple study that we did uh, and where we try to put in uh, uh, the emissions uh, uh, pricing or the carbon pricing on the transportation sector in india so we used a simple tool called gcam and uh, we went by uh, the current uh, target of net zero that has been announced by the country of 2070 so if we would have to make uh, the transportation sector which is one of the largest sectors or uh, consuming energy to be net zero by 2070 and and that has to be done with the imposition of carbon tax and that's this is the uh, policy alone that we are putting in and uh, we know what are the present emissions so we started in uh, thinking from the year 2030 and all the way till 2070 and we are also knowing what are the emissions from the transportation sector at that particular end and we want the emissions to be reducing linearly from what that particular year so what we wanted to see if we start a carbon tax maybe from it uh, 2030 what would be the carbon price that would have been imposed and similarly if i would be starting from the year 2065 that is just five years before uh, and the net zero what would be the carbon tax what that would have to be imposed and we found that the earlier that we start the better uh, because the later we start the carbon tax uh, tends to be much more so now the people have been arguing that people of uh, 15 or 20 years down the line might, might be much more affluent and, and they might want to pay more carbon tax so that is the thinking in in delaying of the carbon taxes but uh, the study that we did uh, brings out that we might want to start early because that there are certain hard to abate sectors in the transport sector like the aviation sector as well as the marine sector which would call for a very high carbon price if uh, it has to be net zero by the year 2070 further we see that uh, the uh, the start date of the carbon price would also have an effect on the penetration of the different uh, uh, new technologies like the evs or the hydrogen vehicles the penetration would be different of all the dates we start uh, 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 we would start uh, with the carbon pricing so this was just an example like uh, of the different scenarios that uh, policy makers would want to create to understand the effect of different policies and carbon policies one of them now let us uh, uh, try to understand the effect of uh, uh, certain judicial delays which is quite common in, in the energy sector and what would be the effect of such kind of delays on the overall profitability of the plant so let us uh, go back to the same example of uh, the wind farm which we want to set up and now there comes an environmental firm 
and uh, who has uh, an objection to setting up of the wind plant given that and that uh, in the area in which the wind farm was being set up uh, and uh, we experience uh, a lot of migratory birds uh, coming in and then going uh, during uh, during some particular seasons and it might happen that there would be bird hits by the uh, by all the birds hitting the wind farms and uh, there would be a life uh, there will be a loss of the avian life uh, many uh, birds might die or might uh, get injured because of the bird hits uh, bird hitting the wind farms and uh, they uh, and such kind of uh, firm has uh, approached a local uh, uh, a local magistrate or a local judicial body and convinced him that it could be uh, not beneficial for uh, the life of the birds and uh, being convinced uh, the particular uh, judicial body has put in uh, a need for setting up or 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 a setting up of a complete and investigation that brings up the environmental and ecological impacts of the proposed project so what will happen is they uh, this project would be stalled for a few years and uh, because the judicial processes uh, take their own time and the uh, and in this case let us assume that the whole judicial process they uh, take uh, takes place that uh, and the report is prepared and that that is taken to a higher court where uh, the entity uh, is able to justify that there would not be a very significant effect in terms of the loss to the avian life and they are able to r start running the plant but in, in this uh, doing so what happens is the plant is unable to operate uh, for a few years in the beginning so what has happened is the uh, the entity has uh, put in uh, the infrastructure they have erected the wind farms but at that time there was this uh, environmental advocacy firm or an ngo that came up and puts up the case that there might be some detrimental effects to the environment and because of uh, uh, their perceived notion there uh, is put uh, like the local uh, court puts a, a delay on the uh, on the start of the plant uh, the uh, the uh, corporate would have to take up the due process, come up uh, with uh, the due reports which uh, justify uh, their claims on uh, like if they are true or not and then uh, they start the plant again after uh, the case has been settled. So let us uh, try to understand what happens in such a case. Going back to the excel sheet, so it is the same sheet that we see and we herein we have uh, put in an assumption that the earlier plant which was uh, uh, being able to operate profitably because of the ap appreciated uh, uh, accelerated depreciation as well as a tax credit uh, was no would not be able to operate from the year two as it was earlier envisioned because of the ju judicial delay and further it would be able to delay uh, it will be able to operate just 50 percent of the rated capacity in the third year so we have expected a delay of around uh, 15 to 18 months that would be taking place and if you consider the uh, judicial processes this is uh, particularly uh, on the optimistic sides because these kinds of cases or litigations can span for a couple of years so in this case what we can see is the uh, although the wind farm was erected it was not able to operate as per the rated capacity in the year 2 and almost on the 50% of the rated capacity in the year 3 and this would affect the revenue that is generated so overall what we see is the case uh, that it was positive in the earlier case but just because of not being operational for one and a half year the npv has again come up to be a negative of around 5 cr so a profit making plant has now turned to be a loss making plant and this is again one of the reasons why uh, the corporates would want to attach a very high discount rate to a projects like this because uh, of the perceived notion that many uh, people or many lobbies might not appreciate uh, the coming up of plants like this and might want uh, to put, uh, uh, put up certain kind of litigations which might delay the plant. So uh, this was a case that was undertaken to help us understand the effect of delays like this and, and this is something that you would have read in the popular literature as well wherein the plant which was estimated to be uh, being erected at a particular cost but because of the delays that happens for many reasons the cost keeps on increasing uh, as the years go by. So in this particular class uh, we have tried to understand uh, uh, using a hypothetical case of a wind energy farm how the different kinds of incentives and policies as well as different kind of interventions could affect the profitability of a plant and uh, with this uh, we end today's class thank you